how many of you guys would like help when your kids are outside of your home? You've got it going on in your house, but when you include the school or when you include grandparents or when you include anyone else, then things go sideways. How many of you guys need help with a teen or with school, advocating at school? That's what we're going to be talking about. I would love to bring on the amazing Leanne Ross. So Leanne, hello, talk to me about your family, who you are, and a little bit about yourself. Well, we're a family of three. There's myself, my partner who I've been with for 19 years, and our now 12-year-old son. Uh, we wow. live in Canada. Mm-hmm. I live okay. in the west coast side of Canada. Okay. I do software developing development and I work seventy-five percent time so that I can be home with him after school. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. And so Leanne, talk to us a little bit about where things were in your life before you started Calm the Chaos. Well, I felt <laughs> lost and like I was the worst parent in the world. I used to wake up in the middle of the night crying and wondering if my son was going to be okay. I used to walk on eggshells wondering what would set him off today or what would be, what would the next thing happen at school be? What I dreaded those daily phone calls or emails from the principal or the teacher telling me about yet another incident where my son was the one to blame. I felt like I didn't know how to help him. Hmm. Yeah. And, and so you're going to be talking to us about advocating with school. So what was going mm -hmm. on with school that you needed an advocacy plan for? Well, he was, school was a place of like shame and blame for him. They, he was punished for reacting to certain situations. He was blamed for things that he didn't do by the teachers or other students. Even when somebody had vouched for him, the teachers didn't believe the other students. They said that, no, it had to have been him. So he was going through all of that. The punishments included things like missing recess, sitting on the bench outside of the office during lunch break, only being allowed to play on a certain playground during outside time while his friends played in a different area, sitting in the principal's office until he told them what, what they wanted to hear as being suspended from school in grade two. There mm. was, yeah, we'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> Yeah, lots of school, mm -hmm. almost like trauma, right? Like right. things that right. were kind of traumatizing to both him and to you. So, so you're going to be walking us through the advocacy plan for school. Was there something specific you were working on when you created this plan or is it more of a general? It was more trying to get the teachers to work with him, um, mm -hmm. to understand him, to make sure that his needs were being met so that he could feel like he was being heard and valued and that his opinion actually mattered because mm. it, there were times when situations happened and they would ask the kids what happened but they wouldn't let him tell his side of the story and so he didn't mm -hmm. feel like he had anyone that he could even go to to as support yeah. So that's what and I what wanted was, for him. What was the ripple effect? Like, can, do you mind talking about that just a little bit? Because I know sure. we've worked really closely together. So I know some of this piece, but what was the ripple effect of, of what was happening at school on his self-esteem and what he thought about himself? He thought of himself as always the, the problem child, that he could never do anything right, that no one wanted him around his self-esteem was really low he still has that negative self-talk towards himself and mm -hmm. that's another thing that we're we're still working on and it's been a couple of years working mm -hmm. through that yeah mm -hmm. yeah and there was even yeah I just I remember that being a big part of it of just this like ripple effect on his self-esteem so mm -hmm. walk us through the UQ with advocating with the school so that they could start kind of listening and hearing what his needs were okay the U part first I had to learn how to trust myself um, mm -hmm. and and realize that I I was the expert on my child I used to there was a time when I actually believed the the teachers over my own son and thinking that they're the teachers they must know they they mm -hmm. know him they know what to do but it wasn't what was working for for my son and so I had to learn to to trust me to trust mm -hmm. that what my son was telling me 
was what he was feeling and what was the truth. And then I had to see the teachers as part of the team, not as mm-hmm. someone we're working against, which is what it felt like for so long. So it was a lot of mindset shifts for me too. Yeah. I love that so much. All right. So let's move to connection. How did you get the teachers on board? I had to actually work on building a relationship with them. Um, mm. I, I got to know them a bit and I, I actually went and at first I went and actually met with them and explained everything that had happened in the past, not every little detail, but everything that happened in the past so that they could understand where I was coming from. And then find out from them what they're how they felt and what they knew how to do and and then even now today like I still do that like I point out to to them to the teachers like the things that I've noticed like positive interactions they've had with him how they work to build a relationship mm-hmm. with my son as well yeah so it's it's a lot different than it was for sure Yeah. So instead of how many of you guys have ever dealt with the school and you want to go in just guns blaring, right? And you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you would do this. Why would you do this? But what you're saying is you actually got to know them. You understood where they were coming from. You were paying attention to the good things that were happening between them and your son instead of seeing it all as negative. That is absolutely beautiful. Um, Mm -hmm. So understanding, talk to me about the understanding piece. I had to get curious and and try to figure out what was happening. Like, you know, at first they would say that, you know, he did this certain action. And so I just try to figure out, okay, well, what was causing it Mm -hmm. uh, beforehand? So it's kind of like spiraling it out in a sense. Like I had to ask questions about how, what had happened with all the kids, like who was involved. And then I also had to make sure to talk to my son to find out from him what actually was happening and what his thoughts were and how he was feeling. Mm -hmm. And, and then after knowing all of that, I had to figure out what my, what his superpowers were, what his needs were, his preferences and all of that so that Mm -hmm. I could then understand it more. And I could explain it to the teachers so that they have an idea of what to expect or, or what he could be going through or Mm -hmm. where to direct him if he needs help where he could find it. Yeah, that's awesome. And then empowerment. Again, I had to, like, I was listening to him, showing him that his voice matters by listening to him and letting him tell me about his day and things that happen and and help him see what his own needs and preferences are so that then he can advocate for himself or he, you know, he's actually able to make plans with the teacher ahead of time now so that he's prepared Mm -hmm. and knows what, what to do in certain situations. We've done that him and I as well. So he can kind of expect this is what's going to happen in this, this situation. But he also has done that with the teachers, which I think is, is actually quite, quite amazing. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. taught him how to make plans, how to mm-hmm. see his own needs and a lot through modeling. So how has that changed what's going on at school? He's a lot happier, actually. And he enjoys, he, he enjoys going to school. He's, made friends he's not as angry as he used to always be he feels like he has the support that he needs he feels like he can go to there's someone there that he can actually go to and talk to about things yeah yeah awesome and how has that rippled into just his self-esteem and at home and all of that sort of stuff as well it's he like I say he is a lot happier he's actually more of a child now than he was before like he's you can see the playful and the fun side of him at home more than we used to be able to. It's kind of like he's been given his childhood back in a sense by being Mm. able to work through this at school for him. So Mm. I love that Mm. so much. And how has your view of your parenting changed? Because you said you felt like a terrible parent. You felt like you were failing. You had no, you know, no belief in your own decision. So how has that changed? Well, I know that I'm the best parent for my child. I know I'm the expert on him. I have more Mm -hmm. confidence when I make decisions around this. I'm more confident about what he needs at school. I'm able to build, like I said, the relationship with the teachers so we can work together to help my son. And I'm just happier and more carefree. I don't wake up crying anymore. I enjoy actually hanging out with my son. And we we have lots of fun together, lots of laughs. 
Yeah, I love that so much. Well, if you're, if, if someone here is thinking, okay, I am struggling. I, I think I've got, I understand my kid. I understand what I need, but like, I, how do I get other people to see who I see? How do I get other kid, people to understand? And they're wondering if this is something that would work for them. What would you say to them? If they're struggling to understand? Like if they're struggling to see if this program would work for them to be able to help others see the kid they see, right? Like you saw your kid, that was always mm -hmm. there, but then you were struggling to get yourself, like you were struggling yeah. to get others to see and you were struggling, you know, he was struggling so much at school. So what would you say to them? Well, I wasn't, I didn't always see him, see mm. or understand him. I actually, we got to the point where I had chose, like I believed the teachers and I'd mm. broken his trust and our relationship went like it went mm. so far off track like I didn't know if we were going to have a relationship like because he didn't trust me to do things for him I had to work hard to build that trust back and to mm. show him that I was there for him if he wanted me to bring something to him at school that he forgot at home I made sure to actually do that to show mm -hmm. him that I'm there right and so it's just going through the CTC program, it just, it helps me understand all of this and understand that it is so important to build that relationship with my son, with the teachers in order for everything to come together in the end. Mm -hmm. And it, but, it does take time, but you can get there. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, tomorrow we are opening up our program on our training and we've gotten a lot of questions about that. Like, is that something that, you know, you think people can, should do, they can do it on their own? Like, what would you say to someone who's thinking about possibly joining us in Next Step? Uh, I would say make the jump. <laughs> I was on the fence for quite a while before joining CTC. I had followed Dana for a few years. And I had tried doing this on my own. I, you know, you can search the internet, you can piece everything together. It'll just take a long time, but this, the framework, it really works. And you just need to trust the process, make the investment and your return, it'll be through the roof. Like you, you can't even imagine it right now. Dana and her team, they really do care about each and every one of us. And they're all here to help us in whatever way we need it. Yeah. And there's one thing I wanted to say too, is that, Danny will tell you what you need to know to have success. It may not necessarily be what you want to know, though. <laughs> but, if, but if you can put your trust in her and her team in the process, you will have success. <laughs> are you saying yeah. sometimes we are a little like, <laughs> eh, 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 this is what you need? We yeah. may or may not have made people mad before. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> in a good way, though. It, it worked out in the end. So. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Well, yeah. I am just, I'm so proud of what you've done. I'm so proud of the work you've put in and the, just how far you and your family have come over just, you know, and I know you've been with us for a while, but you mm -hmm. really like went in and invested even more in time and energy and how much you were really working on these plans over the last, like, I would say like 90 days to, you know, the last six months, you really went all in. And I just think that that is, is so commendable to you and you can really see the difference. I mean, I would say that to me, you appear to be a totally different person than six months ago. So just, it's been an honor to walk with this journey with you for sure. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else just from your heart I didn't ask about that you'd like to share? Just that I'm so grateful that I chose to trust you and that you, that you have given me back my child. And I'll mm -hmm. treasure all those moments of joy that we now experience. Thank you. That is so lovely. Mm -hmm. Well, Leanne, thank you so much.